Oh, it tastes so dark. Hey guys, this is my review for Titans, the new DC show that just came out. Uh, it's on Netflix. I thought it was coming out on the DC streaming service. That's what they were talking about. And then all of a sudden it was like, hey, it's on Netflix. Now, admittedly, we all thought this was actually going to be garbage. The initial trailers looked terrible. And the costume choices for certain characters looked terrible. Because at least to say the show actually isn't that bad. It is a bit rudimentary. There's a few things that are kind of, mm, kind of copy and paste storyline. The darkness kind of goes a little bit over sometimes, but comparing it to certain hogwash shows like The Flash or Arrow or Supergirl, I like Titans more because I can take this show seriously and not laugh at how corny this crap is. This is actually a different take on these characters. Sure, it's a dark version of these characters, but at least it's something different. Because when we were originally given the New 52, God knows back what in the early 2000s, late 2000s, we were told that we were going to get a new version of these characters. Well, really all we did was we got a new coat of paint. Like, literally, their costumes changed a little bit, but barely anything about them changed. This is a different aspect. We follow Dick Grayson, who has left Batman, but he still carries this unbridled rage which he takes out on criminals and he's brutal to these guys like, he's not doing what batman would be fine with he is doing some dark ass shit but that's the batman we know this is a different bruce wayne we're alluded to him the whole time but we never really get to see him dick is helping out this girl raven uh rachel who is kind of figuring out whether or not she has a demon inside of her along the way we meet cory who yes Terrible, terrible costume design. Absolutely awful costume design. She looks like a stripper the whole freaking show. But the woman playing her, however, is actually really good. She did a good job. And Beast Boy, he's there. Admittedly, he's kind of the weakest part of this show. Him and Rachel kind of have a relationship, but they're like the two kids while Corey and Dick do all the adult stuff. There are some episodes here and there that are kind of lackluster. There are some that are actually really exceptional. One of my favorite ones, actually, is one that's entirely dedicated to Hawk and Dove. These two are the side characters that were introduced. One of them just so happens to be played by Thad from Blue Mountain State. These two actually have a really good connection with each other, and I like their story. And I like their kind of pulling in with Dick and his story. There are some other really good episodes in here, too. There's some cool conspiracies. There's some fantastic fight scenes. This is a well-shot show. If there's anything that you can't complain about, it's how well it's shot. Yeah, it's dark and it's near impossible to try and watch on your phone in the day. I had to like put a blanket on my head to watch certain scenes. It's actually a really well-shot show. There's some great cinematography, some great lighting, some great colors. Admittedly, the last episode, I don't want to spoil it, but it's kind of a cop-out, but it's a cool cop-out because they put so much effort into it. They put so much effort into establishing this world and showing what would happen if. And it is such a cool, cool concept episode. As the season finale, it's kind of a toss-up for me, honestly. That's It's a bit of an eh to end the season on, but... I actually like the idea of it because of how well it was executed. As for the problems of the show, like I said, there's a bit of copy and paste. Rachel just keeps on getting hopped around from different place to different place. Uh, she's honestly kind of a useless, annoying character for a while. Beast Boy doesn't do much either. And everyone keeps on going off on their own. It's like supernatural mentality. I swear, I think it happens at least once an episode. And the instant that they disagree with each other and they go off on their own, everything fucks up. And it happens like multiple times in this season. So there are some predictable factors, there are some very cheesy and some poor writing choices. But aside from that, this is still a lot better than it has any right to be. Admittedly, I thought this was going to be a complete garbage project. 
and it surpassed my expectations, and that's rare to say. So in the end, I'm actually gonna give Titans a five out of seven. I've actually rewatched a bunch of episodes because of how well they were written. Yeah, some of you guys might agree with this because it is a much darker, and it kind of plays into that whole joke about DC being dark, but I'll watch this any day over fucking Batman with a bow. Anyways guys, I hope you liked this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Oh, by the way, gonna do a shout out again for Camp Death 3 in 2D, which comes out on Amazon Prime on February 16th. These guys let me watch the movie early, and it's a pretty cool, terrible, purposely terrible, funny horror movie made here in Canada. And I just want to support these guys, so make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link for their Facebook page in the description. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See you guys next time.